Welcome to the Friendly Aussie Podcast. Welcome, everybody, to the Friendly Aussie Podcast. Today, we have Matt Shales from Hemp Brothers, Endosent, Medican Clinics, and Marley, and probably a couple other things that I might have even missed. Matt is an absolute legend from the Australian scene, uh, a cannabis entrepreneur through and through. He's been grinding it out for years, and all of these companies are about to go into an investment round. Um, and that's about to happen literally when this podcast releases. Uh, hi, Matt. Welcome. Yeah. Hey, Matt. Hey, fellas. Cheers for having me. Thanks for the uh, the lovely intro. <laughs> yeah, no worries. Very exciting stuff that's happening over on uh, on your side of the industry at the moment. Your side Obviously. of the world, really? Like, Matt's in Perth. You know, he's literally on the other side of the world to me. Perth is just so far away. <laughs> <laughs> It'll be nice and hidden over here, but no, yeah, it's been going well in the, the whole industry. It's been very exciting times over the last couple of years, starting to ramp up a bit, which is good. Yeah. Um, I guess one of the first things that I noticed about you compared to a lot of other folks running these cannabis companies is you kind of come from a bit of a grassroots movement. You're someone who loved cannabis from an early age. You kind of understood the plant a little bit more than others. Um, could you go into kind of where your journey with cannabis started and how it evolved? Yeah, yeah, definitely. So um, I think like most that got into cannabis, uh, my first experiences were at a younger age, um, just experimenting, I guess, at, a, at an early age, um, more of a recreational side, I guess. And then I really then just fell in love with the plant. And um, I guess the way it made me feel really helped me with sleep um, and a few ailments mm -hmm. that I was going through. So started to realise there was a, a medical benefit to this and um, my overactive mind if you will started looking in a bit deeper into why it was making me feel this way and that's when i started getting my love for cannabinoids and terpenes and all the different parts of the plant so um yeah it just started like most just experimenting and then um yeah really really became passionate about it and i guess i was quite annoying to my family and friends trying to push it on a lot of them but um <laughs> over the years some people started trying it and it was just endless the amount of uh, positive stories we saw with um yeah people getting medical benefits so um it all really started from that yeah Hmm. it's kind of funny because a lot of people who we talk to it's a very similar story they they just have a, a love that evolves throughout the years and it changes and and grows and becomes maybe a little bit more uh you know legit or scientific over time yeah well, that's the thing well, i was just lucky enough in 2016 with the change of uh, laws here in australia that this passion and hobby i guess could become a career and a reality so um and i guess my knowledge i had was very base level anyone with a with an interest in the topic could have could learn it um mm. but all very anecdotal so it was good in with the change of law we could start to do it in a more formal way and um yeah really started to do some proper research and to try and tame this uh beast that is cannabis and figure out <laughs> how the hell it all works <laughs> yeah for sure yeah, Australia's just kind of been left in the dark for such a long time. You know, a lot of the rest of the world's kind of been aware of cannabis and uh, its medicinal properties. And it's not like it wasn't unknown here. It just wasn't talked about, like not even a little bit. It's um, always been funny to me that Australia is one of the largest consumers of cannabis in the world, but it's never talked about. Um, yeah, the stigma was very, very well alive. It's still there, isn't it? But it's slowly getting better. But yeah, people just seem nervous to... to tell people about their cannabis use but they're also very happy to tell people about their alcohol use or, or mm. do it whilst they're having alcohol so it's just about changing that stigma isn't it and, and improving mm. education and awareness that it's uh not a scary medicine or not a scary drug it's actually a very helpful medicine yeah that's that's an interesting point i mean you know all of the the cultural connotations uh, it kind of finds itself within the the culture war more broadly in this kind of progress between you know uh Back in the day, people felt that even alcohol wasn't acceptable to drink, and um, and you kind of have this back and forth that's occurred over they the decades. They weren't wrong. Well, yeah, <laughs> but I mean, the the question has become more and more um, not just what are the benefits or what are the drawbacks um, with this stuff, but also just a matter of uh, what what are people allowed to do with their bodies? How should people be able to treat themselves for various conditions? Um, and I think that the fact that the whole conversation has changed from uh, basically like reefer madness to something a little bit more level headed is a good sign, even yeah, if yeah. we're a bit behind here. Slowly getting there. Yeah, instead of reefer madness, they say we need more evidence it's safe, which is like, <laughs> yeah. just, just a silly of a um, statement. But it's um, but yeah, it's slowly changing. And in the end, I've got to sometimes I step back and go, well, actually, hang on. 
Australia is one of the most strictest countries in the world when it comes to pharmaceuticals. And so the fact that they've allowed us to prescribe these medicines in the first place before doing clinical trials is pretty unique. So yeah. some parts of me are going, come on, guys, we can be doing this better, but at least we're able to do it at all yeah. at the moment whilst we do the clinical trials and then a real proper system will come in place later yeah. without all these extra hurdles we're facing and hopefully a nutraceutical side. But uh, and then with the doctors and the healthcare professionals, um, you know, my brother's a surgeon and he, he wants 20 more years of data and <laughs> we have many family fights over this, but it's, um, again, I've got to learn that they've been taught it's a very bad thing at school and whatnot. So mm. they're not just going to listen to me in, in one discussion. So again, we'll just take a bit of time to re-educate, mm. but, um, but at least we're able to now and we can do it in a, in a formal setting. Um, and it can be, you know, it was great. We we're on the news the other day, you know, had Channel 9 News speaking to me about it. So it's, um, yeah, we're getting there slowly. What was it yeah. like to be on TV? <laughs> it was scary. No, it was, um, yeah, it was, I'm very scared, but uh, I just got thrown <laughs> into the deep end. We've got to start doing these things to, again, to, I, I don't want to do it, but it's to do spread awareness. And again, some um, sick and tired hearing people not realise that they can actually access this help. Um, so I just feel obliged to kind of do those things. But no, nah, so far, so good with it all. Uh, mm. So, yes. <laughs> I'm glad you're doing your duty out there. It's important to spread the message. Spread well, it the is. Love. It is, yeah, and that's why I do it. It's like, no, it's, even though I get nervous, it's it's a bit bigger than that, you know. Um, mm. Even just a simple thing on the news, from that we were able to help a, a bunch more patients with very serious ailments and have changed their life already in a couple of weeks. Mm. So it's, um, yeah, it, it's needed. Very cool, man. Yeah. How's uh, how's all of your uh, little separate projects going? You've got uh, you've got Hemp Brothers, Medican, Mali. What's the story with all of those? How did, how did all of this stuff begin? So, yeah, it, it all, well, okay, I'll start from the very start. So Medican Health, I started, um, well, officially in 2019, but a couple of years before that was really going around doing the networking and getting the connections in place. But I really did it because I was a little disappointed in, in, in all honesty with the way the industry was heading at that time. Um, mm. was a lot of the bigger, um, well, not bigger, but it was just more of your, the corporate kind of companies getting involved yes. um, with cannabis. I didn't quite understand the plant. They knew how to run a mm-hmm. business as well, but... Um, didn't quite understand the science behind cannabis. And so I did see there was a bit of a lack in, um, in that side of the industry and, and doing it in a compassionate, affordable way, um, which is what I'm all about. I want to help people. That's really all I want to do. So, um, yep, I bit the bullet and in 2019 started Medicaid Health. Um, so the first things we were doing was getting, um, you know, product supply sorted out. So getting our own products to the market. Um, we partnered up with um, Ecofiber to supply their range in Australia. So we're very proud to do that. And that's, Mm, what led cool. to the first kind of time I could go and speak to doctors and healthcare professionals, repping to them and, um, I guess, spreading my knowledge on the plant, which then made me realise it was a bit, um, or lack of doctors prescribing or the ones that were, were charging far too much again. So mm, yeah, for sure. that then led on to the creation of Medicaid Clinics. Um, that was 2020. Mm. Uh, again, the sole reason for that was to affordability. Um, it was quite funny, actually. I had two patients book into the clinic before it existed. They just said, oh, can I book into your clinic? I said, I don't have a clinic. And then so I thought, hang on, I'll book that one. <laughs> and then, um, yeah, okay, I said, oh, the website's ready, book in. And then, um, <laughs> voila, we had a clinic. And then I think, um, I don't know, I get very lucky too. I, I guess I well, got lucky to attract the right people to join the team and, and share that vision and, and passion of mine for, again, affordability and, and compassion. Um, we really actually care about the people we're helping. So, um, yep, Open Medicaid Clinics, one of the country's most affordable ones, which is very proud of. Um, Not one of, pretty much is the most affordable clinic in Australia. You know, like there's a few that have started to try and price match you guys and they do it often as like a promo special or something. But um, you guys, I'm absolutely 98% sure this is true. Don't quote me or quote me. Uh, you were the first to offer the $99 initial consult. I don't think there was anyone before you guys that was willing to talk to a patient for less than one fifty two hundred. Definitely um, set the bar there. Yeah, and uh, what I, I what I'm most proud about is um, the service that we actually provide. I think that's what just going to our website, no one would see. But um, you know that consult that we have, whether it's a thirty minute consult, it's realistically hours and hours and hours and hours of extra chat after the the consult. Mm. Um, you know, we'll be, we really love looking into the terpenes, the, the minor cannabinoids, okay, it is side effect. But why was that? Rather than just blindly guessing, try this next product, we, you know, I'll contact our partners in Israel for terpene science and, and ask them if any opinions on a, sometimes on a patient by patient case, you know, so we, and we don't really tell that to anyone. It's, um, but that's what we want to do to provide the best service. There's so much that extra stuff we're really doing there as well that, um, 
people probably wouldn't realize but yeah um yeah no it's, it's all i think all the clinics are great even the most expensive one it's i still view them as better than the doctor that says cannabis is bad so um, <laughs> you know again yeah, sure. it, we categorize it in a way and at least the ones that are willing to do it uh, put their name to it that's a big tick um yeah you know it's we're all trying to help but again yes they're I mean, I'm exposed. I'm one of the people that it's very, very low budget. Um, you know, so it's I, you come from a even... grassroots, you know, very self-funded, as far as I understand. Um, yeah, yeah. I reckon actually, you fellas will love this story. Um, so, Hemp Brothers was started mm-hmm. with um, actually. I'll, so I'll continue the story about how it all things. Yeah, Medicaid Health. Then realised we needed some clinics. Um, a bit earlier than that, though, when I just had Medicaid Health and was doing a bit of the networking and um, I was getting all the deals organised over email, really, with with international companies. Um, a mate of mine, um, he was a salesman uh, and he came over and he was wanting to change his, his job. And at that point, I just um, messaged a friend over East that was doing a pet product, a hemp product for pets. And I said, do you need any help in WA? And I'm all meant to share a Facebook post, you know, and he said, yeah, we need distribution. I said, oh, hang on. And <laughs> Hemp Brothers was born. And it was just literally a photo of me and my mate, um, like the, the um, Blues Brothers kind of style. So, you know, $30 logo. And then um, <laughs> before that, though, I said, oh, man, we, we've got this ch- chance here, mate. I've got these sample products just there on the on the bench. We looked at them. I said, do you want to try and sell these? He was all right. So I had 50 bucks to my name at that stage. Um, I said, all right, well, let's, let's go to the casino. We need, a, <laughs> we need some money to, to be able to purchase the first lot of product. Um, yeah. Wow. Yeah, so it's going to be about a $500 order um, for the minimum. True. Order. Yeah, so we went to the casino and, and had a win and then... Um, oh, well, that's lucky. Yeah, we went to be and won the $500 we needed. And then um, I think we might have got a chicken parmy as well. So probably <laughs> 470 left and then, um, and then did the first order. And then we got the first order of oils, went to a stockist, boom, into some stockists, sold that $500 worth, then bought $700 worth, sold that, then bought $1,000 worth. And that's how we've... Yeah, I've never had a loan. Um, Amazing. Never, I'm scared of debt. Um, yeah, me too. Yeah, if mm. you don't have the money, don't spend it is my, my theory and all that. So, yeah, self-funded with all that. Um, and then when Medicaid Health started, um, did our first round of a, a raise just for $50,000 to get, again, a lot. I can't win that much at the casino, so I had to do a thing there. But, again, started that with um, with 50 grand and then and, and got it where it is now as well. So, yeah, all, all fairly self-funded and, um, yeah, uh, yeah just from the ground up, I guess, which is a, a fun little way, but, um, but that was a – Fair few years ago now, four years ago. So things have changed a bit since then. Um, I don't oh, for sure. make business decisions through the casino. <laughs> <laughs> this is early on. And it Humble was, beginnings. Um, yeah. But yeah, that's how that one started. So quite grassroots. Um, Very funny. It's yeah. it's actually great how, um, you know, the, the thread I see going through all these stories is that you've taken like quite unlikely or just like slim or small opportunities and you've really like sought to make something of them by, uh, you know, you, you see that there's a problem within the industry in terms of the corporates taking over, you start Medicaid Health, and then you run into this uh, situation where someone needs um, an affordable clinic and you set up Medicaid clinics. And, and even going back to what you just said, it's it's just a, a very, very small amount of, of startup capital to start something that's turned into something very big. Um, so I, I just think that's really cool. It, seems, it shows what kind of person you are in a way, like, the kind of things that you see and the vision that you have, you try to apply it into, you know, the very small stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah cheers for that. Uh, yeah, so it's, I've, I've got very lucky as well. I've been very lucky with all this. Um, right time, right place. Um, Luck is just um, opportunity that meets preparation, right? Um, yeah, well, I've been preparing for 15 years. <laughs> so, but, um, and, that's it. But yeah, no, and again, I even think like a hemp <laughs> farm. So um, after a um, yeah, a couple of years of preparing for Medicaid, I almost forgot what the plant looked like. And then, um, <laughs> yeah, right. It was all paperwork and Word documents. So then got a hemp license um, just because we I mean, could, you know, again, no, I didn't have a budget. So luckily enough, my uncle had a chicken farm, uh, hmm. a really big chicken farm. And then so it was free for me to use the land and then to feed the hemp plant. Um, I had the chicken manure. Chicken feed, free. yeah. Yeah. Um, and then the water was free. We helped them by using the water. Um, wow. For the license and things. So it was, again, it was all positive. You know, I was like, oh, great. No worries. Let's do that then. I've got that license just to predict a bit of a rule change in the future when they allow us to use more of the industrial hemp plant, um, not have to mm-hmm. bury it. You know, I buried 500 kilograms of CBD flour um, the other year, which was heartbreaking. But that's going to be some good soil, though. <laughs> 
Oh, it was a lot. Yeah, a billion plants grew on there the, the next season. But um, the uh, yeah, and so rule changes to come, and also just a bit of strain development. So we can still utilize everything from that plant, um, other than mm-hmm. THC. So we can be doing some um, yeah, building genetics with high minor cannabinoid um, or high terpene counts, things like that. So uh, business partner Luca De Prado, who's um, actually that that this, this okay. Let's go back onto that point. How I started, I guess, Medican. So I was trying to get jobs at other cannabis companies and none of them would, no one would hire me because I didn't have the legal experience. Mm-hmm. So then I went and found Luca De Prado, um, the Italian stallion. He was doing his PhD on hemp um, for ecofiber. So looking at different cultivars, um, giving him different nutrients and looking at the cannabinoid profile and how that would affect it, growing in different climates and things like that. Um, so I found him online and, and stalked him and asked if I could help him and volunteer. And he said, yeah, I'll contact you soon. And six months went by. So I kept at him, please, please. And then, um, oh, well, it was a very big car crash out the front. Oh, wow. One sec. I better check if they're all right. One second. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, go ahead. That's scary. Yeah, that'd be terrible. If they're okay. Fuck, I didn't even hear that. I heard something a little like... But, yeah, jeez. Um, wild. Wild. Right. Yeah, life is we fragile, can, um... <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. Be safe out on the roads. <laughs> uh, don't be stoned while you oh. drive, you know? Right, right. That was a very good crash. There's... Yes. They okay? No, they're not. But there's people out there helping. Yeah. Oh, gosh. That's crazy. Yeah, I live on the corner of um, a highway, Kane Highway. Yeah. True. And um, yeah, actually, well, anyway, I'll... Don't let me get on too many tangents, but I, I got a, a bravery award for actually pulling people out of a car on that highway, um, a burning car the other year. But anyway. Um, wow. Stop trying so to brag, I, Matt. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's actually no car crash out there. It's a good way to bring it up. Um, <laughs> so, um, oh, yeah, so the farm, oh, yeah, so look at the Friday. So I ended up, volu- finally, he said, yeah, right, come on then. I volunteered, just taking some measurements of plants. And then this is to try and get a job at another cannabis company. And then we mm-hmm. just decided, why don't we just start our own? And then that's yep. how we did that. So look at the Prado, he's done his, He's Dr. Hemp. He's done his PhD on hemp, cool. um, which is really cool. So he's there for uh, the plant science side of things. So the hemp <laughs> farm, um, the whole strain development, things like that as well. So, um, yeah, so got a few different things going on. Hey, can health with the medicines. Oh, clinical trials, um, concussion. Yeah, so we're doing a concussion uh, thing is pretty our, cool. Yeah. Finished our two-year preclinical trial on concussion. Um, that was at Perrin Institute and Curtin University over here uh, in WA. Wow. Um, so, yeah, it was a... A, yeah, a pretty big, serious trial. And the results we got were almost too good where every single formula I tested worked. And I was trying to prove that, you know, the efficacy of my last formula was the best because it had extra terpenes and cannabinoids, <laughs> but they were all really good. So I was like, oh, great, great result for the for cannabis and, and concussion. But I was, I need to do some more to figure out which the best one was. But um, yeah, so that's something we got going on as well. So Medicaid Health, the medicines, clinical trials, and the over-the-counter products with the Hemp Brothers and Endoscent. Um, then we've got the clinic as well um, and the hemp farm as well. So the Hemp Brothers stuff, like things like this, you know, your hemp food. The hemp seeds. Um, yeah, the yeah, pet you know, CBD. Capsules, I, um, yeah. I love what you guys did with the pet CBD. I, I remember running into you at the Health Hemp Innovation Expo and you guys had um, all of that stuff and that's where we first met. Um that's where I really felt like I kind of came into the cannabis world. That was the first event that I went to and I got to meet a lot of people and it was like, oh, wow, this is, this is a real, this exists. Um, it was quite surreal. And I think I saw your products in pet stores before I met you there. So that was a nice little link for me. But what's cool yeah. about it is, you know, you guys kind of had CBD that was for pet use um, on the shelves when people couldn't get CBD very easily. It was still so super regulated, but if you're an animal, it was no problem. Um, I don't know if any humans just kind of ducked into the pet store to pick up their CBD, but um, it's no, always no, spill, been one of those spill weird... a little bit on their finger from feeding it to the dog and stuff like yeah, that. But no, it's like there was a nice um. There was a nice way in. Yeah, it's um we stopped that at the end of last financial year. Um, just because it was, it's still, uh, it's depends which regulator I talk to. Some say no, it's fine, uh, and some say we're not sure. So again, I'm just like, look, let's just avoid it all for now. Um, mm-hmm. And the actual way to do it for pets, 100% compliantly, is compounding. So we're going to go for that route. Um, cool. 
Yeah, this one was a. I just, everything I do, I want to be able to put on a billboard on Canning Highway, you know, and 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 yell it. I don't. I hate grey areas. I hate mm. ones we're not quite sure, which is tricky in a new industry because there's lots of these grey areas. Yeah, yeah, that's right, that's right. But I guess it's better to err on the side of caution in that case, right? Yeah, for us we, your we cannot afford the fines. You know, we're not all counter track. Can't just afford that uh three hundred thousand dollar fine that it got issued today. Um, that would be terrifying. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, I really like to, yeah, I go on the, um, air on the side of caution and, and do it the right way. And it's not a race, you know, but at the start of the industry, there's a long time, to, long way to go. I want to be seen as the, a reliable, genuine company that, mm. um, yeah, I don't, I don't want to push the boundaries. Not, we don't need to. It will get there eventually that the boundaries will be gone and then we'll work mm-hmm. with freely then. So, and there um, is no, um, there's no like, what do you call it? Scarcity of, of people out there who are precisely pushing those boundaries yeah, as regulatory they need, they things. Need us to do it yeah. Yeah. There's definitely um, lanes that people are staying in and, you know, I think all lanes are quite valid. Uh, everyone has kind of their role to play within um, the space. So, mm. you know, I, I, just fundamentally, I think we're in a good position. I think about 2019, 2020, how few medical products were even on the market. I remember I got my first script and I was like, what the fuck is this? It's garbage. Like, I remember what it was. It was um, a chem dog import from Canada. I can't remember the brand. It might've been Althea. And there were these tiny little turd pellets. And I'm like, I paid $180 for this, you know? And I was like, this is, this is some crap weed. And- um, But it was a start. But it was a start. I was like, this is legal. Like, I'm holding something that's not going to send me to court. I was going to say that prison, but I'm like... That was bloody exciting. So that was that, like, moment that it was like, holy shit, this is real. Um, and I remember it was, like, 2016 when they introduced those laws. But you could not get a script unless you were terminally ill till 2018, 19. Um, but I would say more towards 19. Even 18 was still pretty tight. Um, and then COVID hit and then suddenly everyone had a script. It was a lot easier for um, most conditions to be prescribed. Um, I don't know exactly what did it, whether it was um, doctors just getting more open to treating more conditions or some rules got laxed by the TGA. Do you- it also coincided with um, the the market, uh, the black market becoming incredibly inaccessible and unaffordable. Oh, yeah. So I think a lot of people were probably already using it for medicinal purposes anyhow and decided, well, it's basically price matched at this point. Why don't I just do it legally? Yeah, I'm going to do a few bits. Like one, yep, as soon as the price has got a bit more on par. Two, with COVID having been locked down and obviously hard to access. Three, with COVID having been locked down, a lot more telehealth started being more accessible. That's true, also, actually. Yeah. That clinic early 2020, even 2019, that clinic model um picked up a lot more. You can see on the graph where it happens, all the clinics started becoming a lot more um, yeah. prevalent and then um, accessibility increased a bit. But I think it was also just more than the awareness opened up. So because mm. more people were able to go to a clinic or, or get it, then they could tell more friends. Word of mouth, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Because it, it, for the first yeah, year or so, it was very hard. You email the TGA your application and it would take months of back and forth. Yeah, I remember people. that. That's right. Right. Yeah. And so that's when it was the horror stories. Oh, it takes months. It costs thousands and thousands of dollars because, it, of course, you wouldn't charge that much if it takes months to to do it. But um, mm. but then yeah, the it, the stream it got more streamlined with the special access scheme timing. So it was you know sometimes only one day wait time or maybe yep, two right. days. So that Big helped difference. as well. Yeah, yeah. So it was a few things all in one. But then definitely um yeah telehealth that opened up a lot more. I think with with everyone being locked down. And that's what I mean about us being lucky with um. Yeah, we opened a telehealth clinic just because that's all we could do. I didn't have the money to get a brick and mortar. But yeah. It seems to be that was actually the one. That's the model. about it. Yeah. Mm. So it was, um, I'll claim it. No, I didn't. There was no planning <laughs> involved. It was just did what I felt we could do at the time. And um, that's what I just do what I think needs to be done. And if it works, it's great. If it doesn't, we try and fix it to make it work. And um, hmm. I've, I've got a long way to go still, obviously. But so far, it's um, yeah, we're, looking good. Yeah. You're working within an exciting space. Like a lot of things are just changing. Like I know there was a point because you know I've I've worked with you guys that um, the situation with clinics or like dispensaries I suppose um, you know basically going to a pharmacy in WA used to be more difficult than it is now and that's just you know regulatory change like you know strike a strike of the pen yeah and the good bit is um, well the best bit about yeah being a new industry is all these things can change it's not set in the way the mm-hmm. new also is that it's a bit confusing at times because they it's yeah. things being changed all the time but 
where we can get involved if we want to be. You know, I was um, speaking in Parliament, maybe what was it, a month or two ago now, cool. um, at that Parliament Inquiry um, Committee thing for hemp and cannabis in WA. And, yeah, you could just go and speak my truth about what was going on and the fact that I'm burying hemp at my own farm whilst importing hemp from another country and selling that as a medicine. Can you see how that doesn't make sense? These kind of simple things. And, um, and then, yeah, we get invited in to speak about it all and actually have some kind of involvement potentially in, in some of the decision-making or at least have That's our opinion on, on it, which is cool. It's exciting. Um, yeah, yeah. And they deserve to hear what's going on with people, like, on the ground, honestly. They need to know. Well, they, yeah, otherwise, how else do they know what to change? Like, yeah. uh, there was many, many speakers. I was the last one, and they said that I was the only one that was actually being quite open with what we're doing. And then I said, well, how else do you know what to change if we don't tell you what's going on? <laughs> so That's yeah. right. Um, yeah. The but biggest I, problem, honestly, is the disconnection between, like, government and regular people, you know? Yeah, yeah. So I'm trying to do my bit and thing in the middle there, but, I, um, but yeah, it's, sometimes I'm very out of my depth. You know, I was, um, well, I feel like I am, but then after I realised, oh, no, actually, I know. I know I, things. <laughs> I, I have a lot. I can, yeah, I can contribute to this um, industry. But, um, I, yeah, I mean, I used to get really scared and nervous about calling a CEO. You know, like, oh, mm. shit, they're a CEO. I've got to walk around the block. I've got anxiety. Even though I realised, oh, wow, <laughs> we're all just humans. <laughs> like, yeah, even a yeah, government true. person, they're just another person. And so I realised, wow, okay, we're all... Yeah, so it's, I'm learning a lot as we go. Because, like, yeah, commercial diver was all I was before this, an underwater labourer. So no, um, you definitely a more anyone. prestigious mask CEO, even though <laughs> yeah. commercial divers probably deserve more respect. <laughs> I don't know. It was, it was yeah, it was less um, communicating with people down there. Just talking about fish, but um, <laughs> yeah, but yeah, it's a lot of different. Yeah, but no, I'm, I'm loving it. the best bit is it, like, the, the people were actually helping. You know, I get emails mm. and calls every day from patients we're helping, even before we had the clinic and before all this stuff. I was still trying to help people and. And those first few years, you know, I, I didn't give myself a wage for a good three years at the start to make sure we could keep going. And then people going, what the hell, how are you doing now? You're like, you know, I, I wouldn't have done commercial diving for a week with no pay. I wouldn't, before that, when I was a labourer on land, I wouldn't dig a hole without being paid. But mm, right. I love doing this. It's my passion and I love the stories, the lives were changing. You know, um, one will never forget, we had a little autistic boy, um, and this is before Freddie can, um, he has autistic, uh, has autism, sorry, and was getting sent home from school every day. So the parents couldn't go to work. And so I helped him out um, with some oil. And mm. literally within a few weeks, he was going back to school every day, doing singing lessons, getting merit awards, and the parents could now go back to work. And it was that bit that, that really, um, really made me realise when they said we can go back to work, I was like, hang on, okay. So not only you were being stressed about your son not getting an education, but you you had no money, you were getting an income. Yeah. And then, so I really got um, experienced the, the, the life change for the whole family that it can do. Um, and yeah, so then those kind of stories, the shivers on, um, you know, up and down the arms and the tingles, that's what gets me going. And, you know, then we've got a three month old baby, we're helping with epilepsy now through the clinic. Um, wow. The parents made a little movie of it. And from the oil we gave her, she was able to now smile. Well, first of all, make eye contact with the parents for the first time in her life, smiled at them, and then and laugh. They heard her laugh for the first time in their life. And again, I just get these little tingles and when I, like I almost tear up when I see the stories and stuff. But that's why I do it. Like it's so easy to be involved in this industry when when that's what we're doing, you know. It's, mm. um, well, who couldn't love that? This. <laughs> yeah, for sure. It's a gift to be able to, you know, help people in that way. Yeah. And I didn't do anything. I didn't invent it. We just made it accessible. Just you know? You're riding the wave, man. <laughs> yeah. Like, and people yeah. are thanking me for it. Like, I didn't do it. it it's already mm. existed. We just... Um, yeah, we, yeah. So it's, it's. I love it. It's not like I had to sit there for the last fifty years inventing something. It was, um, it was mm. a change in law that allows us to do this. So it's, um, that's what I mean by very lucky. You know, um, yeah, right, right age. You know, if I was eighty when it was legalised, I probably wouldn't be so keen to, mm. to start up a company. True, <laughs> true. Who knows? But, no. yeah, so. yeah, don't count yourself out. You could have been like <laughs> Papa Hemp or something. You know. I think it's um, interesting. Oh, you go. Also, you go. I've got you other go. Things. Ah, oh, I, I was just going to talk about um, the the situation right now with the laws uh, is interesting because you've mm. got um, this space that's opened up for you in the medicinal sphere, um, but as yet we don't really have uh, full access to a broad range of um, use cases. Like it's it's limited to the medical. We still don't even have all the products that we could potentially have, you know, like that's there's, true. There's so there's, that's there. there's development that can still happen in that medical space, but it's far more open and it's presented an opportunity for you. So I want to know, especially because it's been in the news the past couple of days, 
um, what is your take? What what are your thoughts on the idea of um, recreational legalization? Are you still very much in favor of that, or is it because you benefit from the medicinal scheme, you see more of a um, more of a legitimate use case there? Like, what, what are your no, thoughts? No, I see on? a positive for all of it. Yeah, I'm all for um, cool. legalization. Um, the thing is, is yeah, it's it's not black or white. We need all of it. So mm. if I was just wanting to help my sore toe or just relax after work, um, I don't think that should need to be really getting a prescription. Um, right. Seems like a waste yeah. of a doctor's month, time, right? Exactly. But that three-month-old baby I just mentioned treating her epilepsy, they need the doctor involved. You know, mm. they need to make sure it's the exact same formula every time because if it doesn't work today, they have seizures and they can die. But me, mm. if I don't have the right product tonight and I don't have the best sleep ever, I will live. It's fine. And so there's a, there's a need for it all. My grandma, who's now on cannabis, does not want to grow her own medicine. <coughs> um, a lot of people that just think, um, you know, oh, we should be able to grow our own. 100% definitely. But mm. it doesn't mean we can't have a medicinal system too because, yeah, I don't want to have to sit there and grow my own medicine all the time. You can't go on holiday. The house will burn down. And so it's, um, <laughs> you know, it's and to do it properly and to make sure you get your, a good crop, you, you, you You've it's got a lot to spend of time and effort doing it. Yeah, it's not mm. just, again, uh, 100% for us people that are passionate about it would love to. I think about my grandma uh, or my my brother maybe getting medicine for their baby. Can you imagine having to grow your medicine? Like, no, just, yeah, so I need for it all 100% recreation. I, I definitely am all for that. Um, it's just I don't have this one or the other view. I, I believe it's all, it all needed. Just to be both. Yeah, us and then too. the best thing about um, legalisation, I definitely want legalisation, not decriminalisation. I think decriminalisation is just point at a waste of time and more dangerous because mm. we're just allowing people to have more of the unregulated stuff i'd rather know i'd rather i want kush cookies i want girl scout cookies i want gorilla glue you know it's not right. just whatever the dealer had that day and then it was really good mm. for what i needed but i can't get it again you know so that consistency of getting that same yeah. each time would be great um medicine will be cheaper in the end because it's going to well, long term once we've finished our clinical trials potentially on the pbs um even if it's not on the pbs it's still going to be a lot more tax and whatnot involved when it's non-medicinal. So um, again, if it's, yeah, that's what I, my, my view of it is, or at least if it's on the PDS, it's $30. And mm -hmm. so again, yeah, if, if it's actually for a medical ailment, people can still probably go and get the prescription when it's just see a doctor, get it like a normal painkiller and it's $30, fantastic. Um, mm. But no, I need for it all. I, I'm a big believer in all of it. Um, it's not the argument a lot of people get worried about. They think, oh, we can't legalize it, more people consume it. But people that want to consume it are already consuming, already consuming it. it. Yeah, very true. But, He's getting it from Joe next door. And yeah. so at least this way, there's money going back into the um, into the community, um, actually, you know, um, generating revenue, getting tax and whatnot. So, um, yeah, it's, I'm, I'm for it all. I love it. It's, um, yeah. and, and it's nothing about getting in the way of our business. It'd be great. I'll be able to start up another business. I can get many can <laughs> dispensaries going. I was about to business. ask that. Like, yeah. you, you would just see it as another opportunity, yeah? Perfect. Yeah, I love cannabis yeah. in, in all forms. So we yeah. have that perfect boutique grow at the back. Hopefully, I can grow it. That's my real, <laughs> my real that would be great. Yeah. And then a nice, yeah, just premium boutique crop. Um, and then you can grow, you know, have a good product about how well you grew it. The, the annoying bit about medicinal is you can grow the most amazing plant, and then you got to zap it with the radiation and destroy. That's half the right. Yep. And then more about standardization and re replicating it rather than how good your product was. It's how consistent can you keep it, in, which is all very important. But it is um, as a Creates, cannabis uh... enthusiast, it's a different, it's, it's a different side of it. But again, I say, well, this is I am in the medicinal space, so that's the important side. And then once the recreation comes, that's when we can, I can be a bit more relaxed with um, mm. consistency, et cetera. But, uh, but yeah, no, I'm, I'm a big believer in it all. One that's thing awesome. I was thinking about while you're talking about the PBS stuff, maybe it's a little bit of my cynical mind, but one thing I really don't know if I like the idea of cannabis potentially going on the PBS is my understanding of the PBS is it's a lot of medical trials that cost a shitload of money. Um, and then it's like, it's a particular product, you know, like this particular product for this particular condition, which is great. But to me, it seems like that's going to become opportunity for companies to monopolize that product, um, where it becomes like, um, this is what you must be taking to, uh, get a discount on your child's, um, epilepsy condition, but that's the company that's going to get all of those profits because they're the ones that kind of came in first and all of that. And I don't know, I don't know if yeah, that's what's the way interesting. It be. Well, the way like, I look at it, it's not, it's, it's not about the ones that are um, going first, it's the ones that put in the effort and the money to do those trials. The people mm. that aren't doing trials, I just hear for a quick dollar. 
The people that are really wanting to turn this into a medicinal cannabis industry and turn it into a medicine that every doctor is comfortable just going, yep, I understand this, here you go. We need to do these clinical trials. Whether the PBS bit is just a benefit of that, we, we, yeah. we won't be able to have this industry forever as a special access scheme. I can mm. guarantee there's a lot of extra work behind the scenes of this paperwork, you know, and that's why it's so unaffordable for the doctors, um, yeah. prices, yeah. et cetera, because there is a lot of work around it. So that won't be a system that gets into a mainstream medicine. It needs to be registered. It, this is the, unless we think of some other new little medicinal cannabis category. I think there needs um, to be a separate category. I yeah, think it yeah, shouldn't yeah. sit in the traditional medicine. It's, I think, unrealistic, to be honest. Um, well, what's interesting yeah. about about cannabis is that it isn't quite. I mean, in some cases you can get something that's like quite standardized and refined, but in many cases it's not. Uh, it's it's not like a pharmaceutical product. Um, exactly. Yeah, lots of APIs. Well, if the government actually considered it an API when they should, they consider uh, active pharmaceutical pharmaceutical ingredient. If it's THC over one percent or any other cannabinoid over two percent, it's an API, which means you've got to keep it stable. Um, things like that. Right. But, yeah. 1.9% of CBC is huge and that's really mm. doing something, but they don't consider that an API. So, but yeah, really simply, there's lots of different ingredients, as you said, and every other medicines or a lot of other medicines are one, um, mm. which is interesting. True. But yeah, so, so, again, I'd love it to be a different system, but in the system we've got at the minute, if it were just to follow down that path, which is what I'm assuming is happening, which is why we're doing our business around that, is the clinical trials are needed to mm -hmm. two things. One, again, um, to be able to find the best formula for that actual condition so we know we're giving that patient the best thing for them mm. and most importantly is yes the government subsidies at the end of it um one yes more access by doctors being open to it because it's just now like a um every other thing they prescribed here no government crew was needed but yeah the affordability um mm. we would be able to charge a lot more for the product but the government pays for it and the patient only pays 30 bucks but um but yeah and I, I mean i don't see it as um someone then getting monopoly on it or something well i mean if they did, it's because they're the only one that put in the effort to do mm. that. Or um, are they the ones that kind of, you know, put a little bit more effort with the government official that was helping approve that, you know? Like... No, you can't. Well, you know, actually, I'm very, I was about to say you can't do that. You probably could. I'm very naive. We're not up to that point yet. But um, Australian bureaucracy, especially the medical side, um, it can be corrupt, but there's there's probably a fair It does bit seem of... a lot better than the US. Let's not kid yeah. ourselves. Okay, that's so that's again, what you know, I'm trying to say. It's prove that the product works. So if it didn't work for anyone and it had a 5% um, success rate, it wouldn't get approved. Right. Then you've got to compare it against other medicines that already exist on the market for that condition. If it's no good compared to them, they're not going to approve it. So I don't think you can find sure. those things. The, um, but yeah, no, it's, but again, it's, I'm only talking like this because that's the system we've got. I'm not saying, oh, it's how it should be done. But yeah, yeah. yeah, no, I know got. what you mean. And that's when, in a, in a business level, um, that's when you've got global licensing opportunities. You know, we can license this IP out to uh, a company in India, America, wherever. Um, cool. You know, as well for their um, medicinal systems too. So business hat on, um, clinical trials are needed for that big, big, mm. uh, bigger picture to be a billion dollar company, et cetera. Um, and to help more people around the world, realistically, is what is the, the target is. Um, but yeah, it, and, and maybe accessibility. Uh, we we mm. the doctors want to see the data. Um, I know it is safe and got twenty thousand years of data, but <laughs> yeah, I've been beating my head against the wall for too many years just to expect it to appear. So we will get the data for them. And now's just one. Now's is concussion. Next will be motor neuron and Parkinson's disease. Oh, cool. Um, yeah, there's so, some yeah. interesting stuff happening with um, like MS, for instance, um, more more like a, I, there's already research out there, of course, but more of that would actually be um, really good to see because it's a debilitating condition, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So my um, but family members with um, both those conditions, MND and um, Parkinson's, and yeah, it's just helping the, the symptoms, you know, being able to prevent that tremor mm. so they can mm. have their morning coffee. Right, you know, exactly. Just those little things. Yeah, the best bit is it can also potentially prolong their um, life expectancy by slowing the progression of these things. It's not curing mm. anything, but it's yep. even an extra few months, a year, amazing. Um, my old diving boss, actually, I, I helped his dad um, with motor neuron, and he could only speak for a couple of minutes at a time. He was already on THC for the movement, and then I helped him out with CBD for um, just for some other bits and bobs. And he said his lung, mm. I didn't expect this bit, his lung capacity improved and he could speak for hours. Mm, and right. So this, he could, it, they were, one was Tasmania, one was over here, the sun in Perth. So they could actually, it was only on the phone they could speak. And so instead of having a one, two minute conversation, he can now speak for hours, his remaining time with his father, you know, it's, it's huge. Um, it is. Like it's... these stories, it's hard when people haven't been, because I haven't been in these situations much. and. I'm glad I get exposed to them to really see the impact because um, 
until you get put in those scenarios, I don't think you'd realize just a few extra hours to talk to your father, how right. huge that is. You know, some people might be like, oh, what, only got to speak for another hour or, or only extended their life for another few months with certain cancer types, let's say, in the pancreatic cancer trials going on, but three months extra life. Now it doesn't seem like much, but if you were dying, it's huge. So it's, oh, um, yeah. I really, I, I, it's hard to go through it. It's sad, but I, I'm glad I've been exposed to it because it really hits home about how much this medicine can help. Like in my ailments, it's minor, a bit of rest. Mm, and, you, yeah. you know, instead of having dexamphetamines, I'll have <laughs> cannabis, please. But um, so I'm glad I get exposed to these really serious things. Um, unfortunately, my family members that had these conditions earlier was before I was involved in cannabis. I couldn't, um, well, yeah, I, I couldn't obviously convince them about it all. But, um, but yeah, yeah, I saw the good. amount of help it could it could have. But, um, but yeah, so they're the new areas we'll research want to do. But you know, the trials, yeah, it's needed. But, um, but yeah, I, I don't want to see it to be about the people that have the most money being able to do it. I mean, we we'll, we'll get a world first on concussion. And you heard how we got started at the casino. Mm. So... It's um we can do it. We just gotta be strategic with our money. And yeah. this is the Medican headquarters, aka my kitchen. You know, it's, um, <laughs> and that's yeah. I've literally on some um, other day, or if it wasn't uh, during work hours, I've got three other staff members at, around the kitchen bench. You know, um, you wouldn't know it because it seems like quite a professional operation on the outside. You know, we are professional, but we don't waste money on things we don't need. That's um, fair. That's yeah, fair. you know, when I see companies that are pre-revenue and they're getting paid half a million bucks a year each or... Oh, you know, some of those farms that you saw, what was it, uh, Medi Farm on the sunny coast? They uh, mm. they got like more than $20 million worth of investment and never delivered a product and yeah. then went bust. But the CEOs were getting paid, I think, one, two million. And it's like, what they Some deliver? horror stories. Um, yeah. yeah, and that's the thing. I couldn't sleep doing that stuff. Like, I'm, I mean, I don't, I don't know who knows. I'm, maybe I'm not meant for this business well, but I can't bullshit people i can't lie i can't i'm very mm. transparent I, I like to be honest and just genuine in what i'm saying and then i can sleep well at night knowing that you know there's no games going on even in the investment side you know we mm. don't fluff things up and make claims that we've got x amount of hundreds of thousands of patients and that many don't even exist in the country and all these you know things. given that we live in such a commercialized like thoroughly commodified world i think that integrity is actually sort of deeply refreshing um you know, if we're looking at it from just a marketing perspective, which is kind of funny, uh, just being straight up with people can actually be more effective than trying to come up with the best mm -hmm. way to frame yourself, you know? Yeah. This is well, our maybe... messaging, you know, and your messaging is yeah. just like, well, this is how this it is. This is who I am, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's, I mean, it, yeah, I, I don't know any other way. And I, it, I, I don't know, I can't, like, you'd, you'd know, if I was trying to lie to someone, you'd know my face would get all weird, I'd be, oh, you know, it would be it just, I wouldn't be answering. I'd be like, uh. I think and that's a little bit of that ADHD that comes through. You just can't not let it out because you're just yeah. like, I got to say what I'm thinking. Da, 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 da. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. So it's, um, <laughs> and so, and that's the thing. And I, and I only do, do genuine things. I don't do any shifty stuff. So I don't actually care when people are, oh, you worried about things getting revealed or whatever. I'm like, go for it. Like, there's nothing, we're not hiding anything. It's, um, I'm proud of what we've done. And I've actually undersold a lot that we're actually really doing it. I'm, um, I'm not that good at, definitely through this capital raise period where we're meant to be talking ourselves up a lot on right well yeah I, I can't do that it doesn't feel like all I'm, I'm sitting in the kitchen bench just helping some people that's what i see it as but it's um mm -hmm. so it is good when outside people actually kind of let me know what we are doing that it's actually quite a it's turning into a thing yeah. but um but yeah and i just like not having to strategize around conversations you know i'm talking to this person i should say this or that and mm -hmm. no i just say what what's I, correct or yeah. at least what's your truth what well, i think is the right I mean, and then again i'm all for um you know, people would, I would hope they do it back to me and actually put me in my place because it might sound like I think I know what I'm talking about, but if, if, if it's not correct, tell me, you know. Yeah. But, um, but no, yes, yeah, I'm not the most, um, I think I'm a bit of a different, well, I've done no business courses. That's probably the biggest answer there. I haven't learned how I'm meant to be doing all these things. Mm. <laughs> but uh, but no, again, we're here to help people and I make sure we partner with the best, you know, Terpene is our partner in Israel, one of the world leaders in Terpene research, Ecofiber, one of the leaders in CBD, um, you know, we're now starting to lead the way in some research areas like concussion, things like that. Um, if I don't know someone, I try and find the people that we can work with that mm -hmm. do. And that's the best thing about this industry. It's being so new is everyone's, well, a lot of people are happy to collaborate. If mm -hmm. I was trying to make a soft drink and called Coca-Cola, mm -hmm. I don't even think they'd pick up. But yeah. oh, so let's collaborate. They said, no, this, like, you know, we're partnered with, um, you know, what I viewed as some of the leaders around the world. So it's, it's, yeah, it's really cool. Very cool. Good. In fact, the more that that's happening, like clinical trials, collaboration between all these different organizations, the more that's going to be uncovered about what this plant can actually do. Like one of the yeah. interesting parts is that, that, that it's just so many friggin' cannabinoids 
uh, have all of these different functions and effects that we don't really know about yet because it's such mm. a complex system, the ECS. And then on top of that, um, even the stuff that we do know about, we don't know what its true potential is. Like CBD, for instance, cures inflammation. Inflammation is known to like cause a variety of cancers. You know what I mean? Like it, it could have benefits that we haven't really even applied yet. Um, oh, big time. Oh, definitely has benefits we have no idea of. We haven't even discovered all the cannabinoids, let alone the cannabinoid receptors in our body. Yeah. yeah. Let alone, um, like a lot of the trials that have been done in previous years, um, not by you know Australian medicinal cannabis companies, but it's all the stuff over the last couple of decades. It's very um, broad. You know, cannabis did this or THC mm. did that. We can't use that. It's we're talking about one ingredient or a whole species rather than that actual formula. Yeah. So, um, and again, that formula is different than this one. So it's um, we're just touch scraping the surface on really figuring out what's doing what and combining these cannabinoids and these terpenes creates a whole different effect than just mm. those cannabinoids without the terpenes, etc. So, um, entourage stuff. Very, yeah, definitely, I'm a big believer in it. But then, very tricky with um, you know, because for example, the clinical trials we're doing, I wanted to get some very unique cannabinoids um, from Israel, uh, and then someone told me, well, it's all well and good, but you've got to make sure you can actually access that on scale. What's the point of doing a trial on a product that really works? Right. You can't actually, you know, you've got the only one gram of that um, cannabinoid in existence. Well. <laughs> yeah, sure. <laughs> you know, and so there's some of those... privileged things. then. <laughs> yeah. But, um, and so, I mean, that might be a bit for, um, you know, uh, the next kind of venture, a bit more of that... Um, Supply know, side stuff. Yeah, and donating mm. kind of um, all that research to the, the greater good, and it might not lead to products as such, but just that education in general. Yeah, we know. But, um, well, that yeah. terpene could potentially be found elsewhere. You know, it doesn't necessarily have to come through cannabis. It could come through um, just your essential oil type things and having a diffuser, and that's just helping your body with some ailment. Um, it's it's shocking to me as I've gotten older how much smell impacts my general state of being. You know, it's this talk, invisible we, we, effect. We've been talking about terpenes, but really, we're just talking about smells, um, yep. and. How is it that some smells can lift me up and some can put me down um, and everything else in between? It's like, obviously, cannabis is such a robust and complex plant where those smells are kind of intertwined. You know, you could have that uppy smell, but you could have the downy smell like and that levels you out for some reason. You know, mm. so it's found its balance. So. Um, I, I've always had this weird cyberpunk vision of like 50 years in the future where you had like an inhaler of like terpenes and that was binded with some THC and it'd be more direct. There you go. <laughs> the future is now, bucko. <laughs> and God, that's funny. <laughs> you know, you hit it and it's like a shot of nitrous almost or something. Like you just start going, like it's the lemonine and I'm yeah. like, yeah, I'm buzzing, bro. <laughs> that's Yosef's like electrochemical, like dreams of the future. <laughs> Aromatherapy, and that's the thing, like everyone always, they've already known of terpenes, they just didn't call them terpenes, they just called yeah. it essential oils or lavender oil or, but it's, well, part of those other terpenes, the aromatic mm -hmm. compounds at least. And so it's, um, you know, you walk through a forest and you have that <laughs> nice feeling and it's because of the terpenes you're breathing in, mm. um, things like that. And so it's, that's definitely real. Uh, when I used to go to the hemp farm, very high myrcene um, profiles with just mangoes everywhere. But yeah, I... Part of the terpenes, maybe part of the excitement of seeing the plants, but I just get happy walking through it. It's still <laughs> great. And, you know, and it is, yeah, it's, yeah. it's aromatherapy. And that's where the whole endo scent thing came. So swallowing the scent. So endo was in the body and scent, but um, oh, yeah. terpene line. But yeah, no, it's, um, I reckon a lot more people start to look into this now. Through cannabis in a way, they're going, oh, what are these terpenes? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Wow, they're actually all around us yeah, and every nice. single plant, every smell. Was a, we, um, we used to just kind of put it on, oh, it's just the hippie nonsense of um, yeah, essential yeah. oils or like, oh, I might yeah, as well get shit. some crystals now, you know. Yep. <laughs> that that was the assumption. Um, right. And then so, that's how we were always viewed as well, the cannabis, so just hippies, blah, blah. But yeah, now, yeah. oh no, so it's, yes, it's, I feel guilty for not actually. Um, Knowing as much hippie. as we should. Yeah. Yeah and, and, yeah, and kind of palming some of those people across and going, oh, yeah, yeah. but it's, are onto it. <laughs> um, we touched on this just a little bit before how you're talking about um, your marketing being very honest and sincere and um, true to you. One of the things that I've noticed about you, Matt, um, and I think the entire cannabis community in Australia has noticed this, you're on the groups, um, you're on Facebook, you're on Instagram, you're answering questions, Engaging people put with little people. complaints about Medicare and you're like, oh, let me fix this for you. You know, you jump right in there. Um, 
I don't think there's another cannabis CEO in Australia that even comes close to the amount of community engagement that you do. Um, and I think one, that's part of where your success has come from um, because you are talking to the people that know this plant pretty well, but they might not know it as well as they think they do. Um, and you're also helping disprove a lot of myths surrounding the medical cannabis industry. Um, you know, a lot of people are like, oh, why would I ever bother going to a fucking doctor? Oh, they're just going to sting me for this much money and da, 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 da. And you kind of actually give them reasons to understand and trust you. So mm. I don't really have a question out of this. It's more of just a thank you. Yeah. Thanks um, for dispelling all those shitty rumors. <laughs> uh, and I think, I think for me, you really are doing, um, really good work. And to me, it, it's so very apparent that you're not chasing the dollar, you're chasing the reward of the plant. Like you're trying to bring the plant into the light um, where it's kind of just been kept in the dark for however many years. While, you know, there are other companies, some are doing it for money and I have no issue with that. I fucking love business. It's, it's, it's fine to do that. But um, to me, your values as a person and that ultimately goes into your businesses is so genuine um, that I think you're doing true service to the cannabis plant. Um, and, you know, some people would call that hippie speak, but to me, you know, that cannabis is like, um, cannabis is a deity to me. It's a um, consciousness. Like, you know, yep. it, it exists beyond people. It's lived here longer than we have. Mm. Um, it knows, you know, how to survive through the harshest of elements. It's been through ice ages. So, you know, cannabis to me, um, it came into my life as me being a degenerate university student, um, you know, just enjoying it and all of that, but felt a bit of a calling. Like I felt like I was indebted to this plant because without this plant, I wouldn't be nearly the person that I am today. I wouldn't have the open mind. I wouldn't have these discussions. I wouldn't Man, I used to just get angry and troll people. And now I'm like, why would I do that? Like, and it was because of cannabis. It allowed me to connect with people in a way I couldn't before. Yeah. Um, so yeah, just coming back to it, it's uh you're going into a fundraise. Um, and you've got Fab's full fucking support here, um, and an endorsement because you genuinely are a genuine person. Um, and I think to me. You know, genuine people sometimes get a little short rubbed um, just because they can't, you know, back up with numbers as easily as others um, or, you know, here's my data to prove how much we're going to earn and all of this. But to me, the most genuine people in human history have often created um, the biggest things. I think Steve Jobs was really genuine. Um, he was a bit of an arsehole to his employees, but he was genuine about the vision that he wanted to bring to life. Same with uh, a Bill Gates, same with a Zuckerberg, say what you will, but he's managed to connect humanity in a way that no one else has ever done um, and sharing ideas and all of that. And all of these people stayed true to what they were believing in their vision. So I really wish you and the Medican, the Hemp Brothers, just the whole team, everyone you work with, who I've met plenty of, um, the best luck um, and the best fortune going forward into this and I really hope to see Medican 10 years from now in every city or every couple suburbs. There's a clinic here or a dispensary there. Maybe you will on the be the mega Woolies, you know, yeah. and we'll be like, we talked to Matt Shales in 2022. We knew the guy, <laughs> you know? Oh, well, hopefully, fingers crossed. <laughs> I mean, to be honest, I hope I don't actually see, or well, thank you for those kind words. Um, but yeah, I hope I don't see 10 Medican clinics because I hope. <laughs> that everyone's own doctor just does it for themselves. You know? that, that's a good point. Um, yeah, I actually don't want the clinic to exist for much while. Obviously, at least at the moment, when I say much longer, I mean X amount of years. But yeah, ideally, someone's own GP, bulk billing them, and they're on top of all their other conditions, great, you know, but... That would be great. To be, if I think that's, to be 10, that's a while good. away. we got to retrain doctors and start training. Yeah. Like, what universities are teaching cannabinoids yet? I don't think that exists as a course. No, Matt, yeah, our I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> we'll have to start one but no it's um yeah long way to go through it is like we get in our little cannabis bubble and think yes we're there yeah, Everyone's yeah, yeah. onto it and then yeah the neighbor is like hey did you know cannabis was legal i'm like god dang it okay, do you know who i am <laughs> <laughs> i haven't even, yeah i haven't spread the word like my own friends booked into another clinic and didn't realize that we existed so <laughs> it is harder because we can't market we can't advertise yeah, really yeah true so it's, it is tricky but um 
Yeah, no, it's exciting. Yeah, thank you for your support with it all. The, the raise is going to be an interesting one. It's the first time we've kind of gone into the public and said, hello, we exist. What do you think? Um, we've had, so the, I guess when this goes live, we'll probably be um, a little bit after. We're hoping to put right. this live the day uh, the raise goes live. That's the goal here. So there we go, on. but that's the goal. Yeah, so that's in a week's time. So up to now, it's been two weeks of the expression of interest period, and there's been 700 and something people express their interest. So it's been really cool to see. Um, and then the way I see it too is um, I'd rather probably have, a, well, I'd definitely rather have um, many hundred just general punters like you and I on board than a couple of big corporates and, again, getting involved in all that. No, let's increase profits, all that nonsense. I just mm. want to have, um, yeah, have the people get on board and, and come join the ride because my parents are sick and tired of me talking to them about it all. Like when I have a really yeah. big mole, I'm great now I've got a team actually, so we can talk to the team about it. But a couple of years ago, it was, it, we had no team. And so I'd be picking up our first, Medicinal cannabis import, and it's huge news. And I'm driving there, I'm like, well, who do I call? Mum, guess what? <laughs> I'm like, I'm like, I don't care, you know. But um, <laughs> and so that's no, good. I just want, I want more to our on the Medican team. And so that's why this yeah, crowd yeah. fund will be great, just being able to get everyone on board. It's only a $250 minimum buy in. So it's cool. Since that only, it's obviously a lot of money, but it's um, before now, it was $50,000 minimum, yeah. um, which obviously my mates and the family and friends couldn't jump on that. So at least right. now it's enough that people can just jump on and um, take yeah, a punt. And, yeah, exactly. <laughs> you, know, you don't need to go to the casino, take a punt on Medican. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Uh, uh, yeah, no, so it's going to be exciting, that one. So um, I don't know, cheers for your support with that. No, it's um, it's been good. We've worked a little bit um, on the sides with uh, Matt and Medican through our digital agency, just helping. Um, improve a little bit of their customer support, um, bit of email and, stuff, bit of emailing. And, um, you know, it's, it's been good to get to know you as a person and it, that's why you've got my endorsement. Um, I, I wouldn't endorse anyone that I didn't believe in similar to you. I say what's on my mind and normally it gets me in a lot of trouble. Um, <laughs> but, uh, this time I think I'm, uh, I think I'm in the right. Yeah, definitely in the right. Um, <laughs> And, you know, I think cannabis has such a exciting future ahead. Like this week, we've got those headlines of talking about uh, legalization coming from the greens and that it's possible on the Commonwealth level, um, drive change, uh, re uh, changing cannabis driving laws. It's getting talked about in every single state. Yeah. And you have like legal experts and, you know, scientific experts lining up behind that kind of media push. It's, it's like things it's could probably time. happen, you know. Yeah, it's a yeah, matter of time. It's getting um, there. And in the, in the end, even when um, they look at the timelines of it, saying, like, okay, if we start this process now, it'll be, you know, a year or two before this, but we need to start at some stage. Um, yeah. mm. Otherwise, if we start to get another three years' time, it's that timeline still exists. So that's it. It's, it. We're getting there. Each time there's another one of these little things that's more and more. One thing I, uh, I see, like, comments, because I, I'm stupid, I read the Instagram comments when I just should scroll. Um, but sometimes you'll just you'll catch somebody saying, uh, this is an important issue. You know, we have more, more important things to tackle, like the housing crisis and, uh, you know, basic uh, cost of living issues and the environment. And it's not like I disagree that those aren't massive issues. It's just the, the idea that we should delay this or like, you know, wait while uh, we sort out, sort out all of these issues first. It doesn't really, really make exist. sense. Well, yeah, that yeah, well, and also the time will pass. There'll be a point where... It, it'll have been three years and then you won't have a Labor government in power and you won't have, uh, maybe we will, but, you know, the the thing is you, you're taking a punt on on making social progress when you decide, no, this isn't important enough, it needs to be delayed. Um, mm. And hopefully the the attitudes there can shift in terms of, well, we have an opportunity now, let's let's try and make something of it. But ultimately it is, uh, it is in some ways uh, a, a grassroots bottom-up thing but they're also top-down influences, like uh, whether at Albanese and Co. want to uh, sign on to something like cannabis legalization is entirely up to them. You know, mm. it's not yeah, looking it's strong. One. <laughs> yeah, not the minute, but it won't. Like when things change, it just it, it, can it just change. happens. That's yeah. it. Yeah, and uh, I, I was kind of hopeful that the you know the amount of debt the country's in now after COVID and everything um, that maybe like a tax revenue out. thing. Yeah, 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 yeah. it's yeah. just huge money. It's easy it's money. Big, that's fair. Billions within the first well, couple of years. Billions. My my thoughts are that's true, but they would probably um like have looked at reassessing the stage three tax cuts if they ever cared about the deficit. Um, but that's that's a side point. I'm just you know it's it's a bit annoying that common sense uh you know changes aren't necessarily put to the public 
uh, immediately because they're scared of the political consequences or the backlash mm -hmm. from whatever. Yeah, that's the thing I'm learning a lot about all this is well, even with the doctor side of things and all that, um, I came into a very naive about, was, you know, everyone's doing things for the right reason. But, um, that's true. But I, yeah, but then I learned that it's not so much like that. There's all these other reasons, you know, yeah. about, you know with the political stuff, I'm just about if they're close to an election or not, it's like, hang on, why shouldn't this decision be about if people need cannabis or not? So it's, yeah. yes, I was pretty right. serious, uh, and yeah, now you're coming at all. But again, all we can do is keep on pushing and keep doing it in the right way. Do it, mm -hmm. show that it is, um, it's a real thing, you know, and, and be open about it. I think people slowly, um, you know, actually, well, okay, I can announce this now. We just got our first uh, advisor on board, um, James Graham from uh, ex-NRL player. Um, cool. And so he's had lots of concussions and he's coming on board around the concussion project and to help spread awareness and whatnot there. And so, Again, it, it shouldn't be this way, but you get um, someone in, a, you know, an athlete or someone in power being open about their cannabis use, and all of a sudden, then, or the news person tells us, and then my grandma now believes in it. it shouldn't be like that, but um, but this is what we've got to do. And so it's great that these things are now happening, and people are a bit more mm -hmm. confident to put their name to these medicines or products. And um, yeah, for sure, there, especially there. athletes. You know, it was like um, ten years ago, I was getting laughed at when I tell people that yeah. one day cannabis will be legalized, and then. Five years later, it, medicinally it did, and so it's um, another. Yeah, you know, who knows what happened the next few years? Yeah, social uh, progress can be can be like that. It seems like nothing's happening, and then you know. that. You know, but for me, it feels we're almost there. Like you know, it's, it's it's not hard these days to go and get your prescription. If it's not working, you try a different product. And, true. And you know, it's it's yes, yeah, it's a little bit more annoying. You can't just walk down to the corner shop and and, yeah. and pick and choose. But we're we're, we're getting, getting there. You know, we're, we're getting, getting there. there, and we're helping a lot of people on the way. That's the best bit. I, I, Talk to my partner about it, and sometimes I do have a good old laugh and just go, "This is the best ever." We are a well, passion of cannabis. We're helping so many people, and actually starting to the business. Not not people within we invested all back in the business, but the business is getting some some what I see as pretty big numbers and serious numbers compared to a diver or a labourer like I was used to. It's like, wow, it's actually creating a business here and helping everyone. And all we're doing is selling cannabis, like my dream for my whole life. So, it's, <laughs> you know, it's, it's, it's amazing. And, and again, it's kind of like, it's a bit of me was like, oh, this is, you know, how cool is this? But then now it's, it's, it's real and serious. Like each mm. time I mention these little stories, it, or each day that passes, there is another real story with uh, someone's mm. whole family is having their life changed and someone's getting off 10 other medications and they had to work again, or they're not going to commit suicide anymore because of something that was going on. Like it's some big things. And so and that's a byproduct of it, you know, mm. almost it's, it's, I'm loving every minute of it. It's, um, I, I found my passion. The truth. That's awesome, man. Like I wake up every day just as happy as the last, and it's um, it's so exciting. And again, as you mentioned earlier, we're just we haven't even figured out all the the formulas, the delivery mechanisms, the um, the products we're going to be making, right down to a genetic point or, or industrial uses. Um, Still so much potential. Genetics. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. it's um, yeah, no, it's we've found our our calling, and we're. <laughs> But now, so this raise, really the put for this raise is to keep up with demand. Um, the first chunk of money will be getting more of the medicines we're already supplying. And then anything more will go towards new products and continue the clinical trials. But I really want to get some unique offerings to the market. You know, I've got a, a lot of knowledge and interest in minor cannabinoids. Um, I'm big on your acidic forms too. Um, I've got a right. lot of knowledge there and experience. So I want to kind of get some of these products to the market. And companies tell me, oh, it's the shelf life. They're not very stable. But well, then let's let's figure out a way to make them stable. We can't just ignore a whole medicine line because of, yeah. we're too lazy. So yeah. um, that's mm. a, a long-term approach with this, the 10 year vision, not, not having to make money this year and then buy mm -hmm. all, you know, so it's, yeah, the, it's, it's exciting and very distracting because <laughs> there's so much to be doing. That's <laughs> but, it. Um, it's shiny not. object syndrome, you know, like everything's pretty interesting and it's like, where yeah. does the attention kind of need to hit? Um, yeah. It's uh, the passion part. It is, it is quite a privilege when you get to wake up and enjoy um, what you're doing day to day. And, you know, this conversation and any others that I've had with you, um, I always think about being the kind of guy that likes cannabis. Let's just call ourselves stoners for a second and be like, oh man, we were stoners. And we were just like, man, I want to make money with weed. Like, I fucking love this thing. Like, how do I do I it? Help and, people. Um, you want to help people. And but, but what's funny about it is, so many people within the cannabis community are like, I want to get into the cannabis industry. I want to, you know, work with cannabis, but because the industry is so tightly regulated, it's like often you need that bachelor's degree in agriculture and you've had to work on farms if you want to be able to grow, or you need to be a pharmacist or a doctor. So it's like quite unobtainable to be in this industry. But what I find funny is 
the people who want to be in this industry find their way to weasel in, you know, um, we, we, we create our own kind of path within this space. Um, I did it. You did it. Um, we've met plenty of others that have kind of just been like, well, I love weed. I'm going to figure out something. So do you it comes have out of true passion? You know, I think if you didn't have that passion, that wouldn't, wouldn't, yeah, you, you wouldn't have the motivation. Like, Where's the motivation? Exactly, yeah. Oh, too yeah. hard. It's you know, too yeah. tricky. I won't do that for me. It's uh, that's hard. Okay. Let's figure out a way to do it. <laughs> it, it just needs to be done. Um, but I guess where I was going with that is, you know, do you have any advice for aspiring entrepreneurs or people who just want to be in this space? Like how do they find their place within it, their role? Like just mm-hmm. general. How do they help people like, like how do you they have? help people like you have? Yeah. That's a good way to put it, Mitch. Thank you. Yeah. Well, again, I think luck was a big thing of it, but yeah, I don't know. Just, just keep at it. Keep finding a way. As I said, I started by, um, at the Medicam side by stalking Luca online saying, please let me, let me touch the plants for growing and, and whatnot. And then, um, and I just thought instead of getting hired from another company, it'd be easier to start my own, I guess. But, um, but yeah, it's, well, I don't, it's hard at these ones. Cause again, I don't, um, I'm not a very businessy person as such. And so the whole, um, a lot of people lately kind of starting to say, oh, you're an entrepreneur and blah, 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 and asking for advice around that. But for me, it just, again, it all stems around that passion. Find something you, well, you have to find something you're passionate and you know what you're passionate about. And if it can be turned into a um, a career, we'll just keep working at it. If it's a hobby, keep mm-hmm. working until you're good enough for it. Someone who's going to want to pay for it, I guess. But for the cannabis side, yeah, tricky because people go, yeah, yeah, there's a lot of barriers. It seems like there's barriers on the paperwork. Um, right. But just go for it. Try it. What's the worst that can happen? You apply for something and if you haven't done it right, they'll tell you you didn't do it right. You're not going to jail. It's, mm-hmm. You make sure you do the applications. If you try and do it all without doing the applications, you might go to jail. And mm-hmm. so, and, and I don't know, call people, ask them. As I said earlier, I was scared to call a CEO or a government person or I had a meeting and be like, oh, God. And I realized they're all just people. And if you have a true passion in this area or you do have some knowledge in it, and when I say knowledge, you won't people that don't really care about the plan will have knowledge without knowing. You know, I didn't think I knew anything mm-hmm. until I saw one of the um, Australian summits, the first one, when um, Ethan Russo and um, uh, um, Mara Gordon, I think it was, were talking about terpenes and just the very basic things about mercine, cap causing couch block, when it's a 0.5% or more with THC, pining can be uplifting, those very anecdotal basic Google searches. Right. And then the doctors are going, wow, you think this is well? Okay, well, okay, hang on, I've learned something today. And I was like, whoa, I could have said all that. And so I realized maybe I do have some knowledge. So very basic things is still helpful in this industry where people don't know, a lot of people don't know anything yet. Just the fact it's mm. illegal or how you access it is knowledge. So, um, yeah, just get involved, talk to people, you know, and, and network around and, and just share your stories. And then it will kind of just pick up somewhere. Um, yeah, just keep at it. That's all I did really. Be a doer. Um, and it's forced to snow by start. Yeah, start mm. start the company yourself, and then and again, it's like there's many different ways to do it. I get out. We we started out with five hundred dollars with with Hemp Brothers. You know, right. I didn't, we could have just probably asked him to maybe can we can we um, maybe get two hundred dollars of the product first. But yeah, it's, you know, just start small. Um, that's how I did it. Again, it's not the right or wrong way. I have no idea. I just saying how I did it. But um, yeah, I, I, yeah. I think the real bit is that passion. When I went when I was doing the pet stuff and was going to stock us, you know, we had a ninety nine percent success rate, and then another people were trying to um same product trying to do it in another state and couldn't sell it at all. And then wanted me to train them how to sell it. I said, I don't, I don't do anything. Just go in and tell them about <laughs> it. You know? And But my, my energy, I think comes out and I am truly passionate. I care. And, and so I think that must come across, but mm-hmm. it's hard because I, I, I don't know what it is, which we need to know how to harness that and scale it up and, and train it. But um, yeah, I think again, if people actually are into what they're doing, that'll just come out and then the rest will flow and just stick at it. You know, that's all I can kind of, Suggestion be in for the right reason. You know, if you're in for the right reason and be genuine, the rest is easy. I couldn't imagine how stressful this would be for some of the other, or any industry would be, or any job for the people that are manipulating and lying and doing all these dodgy deals or things that aren't overly truthful or whatever, or getting investors on board that weren't based on facts. And I, I couldn't sleep. I'd be so stressed and worried and be living it in my mind over and over. So it's um, I think the easiest way is and to keep all your hair and not lose it from stress. Be transparent and be honest and genuine. You know. Might take a bit longer to do business, but it's more enjoyable. I've found anyway. Yeah. The <laughs> the passion line is a good one, and um, Cameron from uh, Heyday, Cameron, I forgot his last name. Uh, the tic- he's TikTok famous, Rosen. That's it. Um, he's one of the most interesting people I've ever talked to. Like he's great, but one thing that he says that I really liked is like 
passion is just excitement. Follow your excitement. Um, you know, a lot of people get wrapped up in, oh, what's my passion or how do I find it? It's like, what gets you excited? Um, you know, just follow that and that will keep leading you closer and closer to your truer passion, but the excitement's the way to do it. You know, you're just excited by the plant, Mm. push on it, figure out something, start sharing more, um, and, you know, offer your help to people who are doing, um, things within the space. I think that's always a good one. Um, Mm. you know, a lot of volunteering and I was stamping people, um, stamping their hands in to go to, uh, you know, municipal cannabis webinar seminars. Um, mm-hmm. back in 2016 you know and so that's how i kind of got a relationship with our import partner and things like that you know yeah, yeah. volunteer but and for me it wasn't like so when i was at uni doing marine biology and they'd say oh you want to go and start volunteering i was like oh, as if i'm not doing anything like that yeah. and then didn't get a job in it, obviously but but this i had the same thing like with that. teaching <laughs> yeah. but this thing didn't feel like that it wasn't oh i'm gonna go and volunteer it was like oh please can i please come and do this yeah, for you? Yeah. like it was a different feeling and yeah follow that excitement and mm. yeah it'll lead you cam's a great guy actually love him i did try to um yeah hey they did well with him i got him <laughs> i was i wanted to hire him early but at that stage didn't didn't have any roles or jobs it was just yeah. me at a desk i was like ah oh. I don't know if I got any jobs. <laughs> I, I found yeah, Cameron so through TikTok and uh, it went on his Instagram and it said flower nurse. And I'm like, wait, cannabis nurse? What do you mean? <laughs> like, <laughs> And then I dug in a little bit more somewhere and uh, I think I Googled him. And then he popped up on the Heyday site and I was like, hang on, this isn't Australia because he has that kind of American accent. Um, but I could also pick up on that he's on Australian and I'm like, what the fuck's a cannabis nurse? Yeah, yeah. Um, no, he's great. He, um, we, yeah. we met each other through the terpene side of things because he's yeah. a terpene line going. And then, um, yeah, no, that's what I hate about being in WA and not, yeah, I can't hang out with all you guys over there. Come all to the East Coast. We're pretty We're pretty chill. Um, yeah. It's, it's, I was well, in to I be honest, all, um, all hanging with each other, but you still probably like, oh no, he's where are they? In, they're in Victoria. Aren't they're they? in Sunny Coast. Yeah, no, Sunny Coast. Yeah, yeah it's still oh, an okay, hour and a half right. away. Oh, he's actually close enough. Yeah, yeah. It's Australia close is so big. Like Western <laughs> yeah. Australia could be a different country. Victoria still feels like it's uh, yeah an entirely different world. Um, Antarctica. Yeah. Yeah, basically, like what the hell. But then at the same time, it's cool because you have these um, isolated scenes, you know, that are all yeah. they're like little Petri dishes. Uh, yeah, yeah. Different things are occurring. And then you have like a HHI, everyone meets on the on the same turf. And then all of a sudden there's this intermingling occurring. It's pretty exciting. Yeah, yeah. Are you guys uh, uh, heading to HHI in Canberra in November? I uh, potentially, yeah. Depending how the raise goes, if we don't yep. raise any money, no. Um, <laughs> if we have a bit of excess, good answer. Take yeah. Some of the team, yeah. I um, some of those things now. I used to go to all those things on my own, well, but just me, and now I feel a little bit guilty. So, like, I, I guess you saw us the symposium, brought the whole team there. But now that we've got a bit of a team, it's it costs a little bit. But um, hmm, but true. yeah, no, I definitely want to get there only for the um, because we just did the uh, Sydney. Yeah, the Sydney. Yeah, line. Sydney HHI. Um, yeah, yeah. That wasn't that long ago. So, but this one's purely for the Canberra. Canberra, so it's, it's sort thing. of legal, you know. <laughs> um, yeah, which is funny though, because it's um, you know, you we get there, we're like, oh great, we can smoke our medicinal cannabis still. It's like, oh, this is actually no different than when I was just smoking <laughs> yeah. at home anyway. Like, oh, I didn't have to fly all the way here to do this. Yeah, but, that's funny. Um, it'd be that's different it. if it was more about. I'm interested to go to Thailand to see the actual yes. setup where it's some stalls and whatnot. But the yeah. reason with Thailand is it's forty, fifty dollars a gram. Have you seen that? But it hasn't been legalized. It's yeah, been, no, it hasn't. It it's just hemp. kind of like, nah, we're doing this anyway. Fuck off. <laughs> like, yeah, it was hemp that was legalized, and they just went, oh, cool, we'll, we'll sell everything. But um, but yeah, that would be exciting if, if Canberra was like that. We can actually go and try something new, like a restaurant or whatever. Yeah. Cool. But um, but yeah, so no, nah, uh, a long way to answer that one. But yeah, depending on the raise, we'll, um, if it goes well, we'll get there. We're hoping to make our way to HHI. Kind of also dependent on financial status and time and. Um, but we would love to go see everyone again. That's kind of where we got to really sink our teeth. And we skipped the Sydney one partly because UIC was what, two weeks prior or one week prior. Yeah, and yeah. it was like, nah, that's too many events, events for me in one hit. Like I'm, I'm done. I'm written off here. Yeah, um, yeah. And then I know Brisbane will be early next year. I think they were planning for March. So we'll obviously be at that one just since we are here. And then yeah. UIC is going to be in Brisbane, uh, I think mid year next year. So there's a lot of cannabis events happening. And um, I think just to the audience, you know, if you want to be more involved, start talking to these people, you know, they might be able to hire you on a part-time or casual basis to help out with some stuff. Um, just find connections and find the people you, I suppose, vibe with or connect with. Um, and uh, there's opportunities all around. And the reason I just bring this up is it always gets asked. 
Um, mm-hmm. so I, I mean, another way to get involved too, and to help uh, Matt and his team get to the next cannabis event, is to uh, you know sign up to the fundraiser. You know, give, give him some money. <laughs> 250 bucks like i have spent way worse on a night out you know um, absolutely so that's, that's the thing that's why if um yeah i feel like it's a nice stress-free one too if um you know 250 bucks here yeah, people have spent more on a round at the pub so it's oh, yeah. sure they can especially that. nowadays you know <laughs> <laughs> that's like five drinks <laughs> yeah exactly yeah it depends where your passions lie right yeah i don't know <laughs> Uh, yeah, well, we're looking at um, with the terpene side of things. Um, yeah, starting to work with a few more um, beverage companies as well, um, and even the low to no alcohol side. Because some of the terpene formulas we've got are really effective. They they make you feel a certain mm. way. They can calm you. They mm. give you energy. They can. Um, some of them are going through clinical trials for pain, beating steroids, and any funny right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Properties, things like that. And so if we put those in a non-alcoholic drink, you can still have a few of them, and then feel an effect whilst you're having mm. a drink with everyone else rather than i'm sure there's no alcohol for a while what work is drinking beers that aren't doing anything yeah well unless you like the taste of beer but i, I do not but um ah, you want boo. to have a feeling like a bit oh a bit yeah. calmer now after three or four of a yeah. drink and so that could be a bit of a thing there terpenes and the beverages mm-hmm. um we let's go back to the old days where um pharmacies were like you know they had the drink fountain and that kind of thing <laughs> no i'm kidding <laughs> <laughs> just no nah, we talked to uh relief who have their um sort of recreational brand mull the cafe and they've got um mocktails with terpenes mm. put in there and they're trying to simulate strains and stuff and i'm like can't wait to go to melbourne and try that that's going to be um a, a really cool experience um, yeah i mean i want to partner up with them i, I reached out to um anthony about all that because i'd love to um yeah that's my jam it's um, <laughs> Yeah, we've, and we've got the formulas. We've literally got, you know, 100 different formulas coming out of Israel, all the strain matched ones, and then some unique ones too. Um, mm. And some cool ones like the uh, memory blend. So the short term memory loss you get with THC, you can counteract that, which is great for people going to work and just that whole, oh, what was I talking about again? In the yeah, middle yeah, of meeting yeah. or something. So, but um, maybe you wouldn't want to hit your memory on a night out on the beers. But yeah, there's all different ways. <laughs> it could be an energizing formula that keeps them there longer to, to, to buy more drinks. Anti hangover cure, maybe. Maybe. Yeah. Oh, terpenes for the anti-hangover. That could be um, that could be a whole new thing. And see, this has been all these more distractions occur. And I'm like, wait, <laughs> hang on a minute. I'm in a bit of a concussion product. <laughs> <laughs> I do you really can tell you do have that um that very highly associative way of thinking. I'm not gonna say you have ADD. All right. I do have ADD. Well, okay, fine. <laughs> <laughs> that's why that's what I use cannabis for, yeah, to just help calm me down. That's um, cool. Before, that was the thing, they prescribed me Dexies when I was a child or when I was younger. I didn't want them then, but when I was at uni, I thought I'll have them now. Right. Yep. Study, but then I had to have the cannabis to get to sleep. Yeah, yeah, that was uh, it. That's that's me as well. Yeah, without that's it, what made me learn about it. So thanks, doctor. They got me into cannabis without realizing. But um, and yeah, it was more about just to the side effects of bloody amphetamines of, of um, pretty intense know, medication. Bit gritty, yeah. bit angry. I don't know. I got a little like uh, agitated if things weren't done quick enough. Um, especially yeah. when you're trying to get towards like sleep and you're calming down off them. It was just. Hey, I feel hey, absolutely I scat whenever I'm on <laughs> next amphetamines. Yeah, I, I, yeah, it's like I've had yeah, amphetamines. I can't eat, can't sleep. And so I need to, I had cannabis to prevent all that. And then we'd need to study again because I'd forget everything I just studied. It's like, God. Mm. <laughs> yeah. Like, uh, uh, no. yeah so, yes, I do have ADD. <laughs> hey, we all got weird neurochemistry. Yeah. I, I'd say I'm more on the autism side of the spectrum, to be honest, if, if well, I have to that, um, label myself. When I did do that, uh, Parliament hearing thing, committee hearing. At the end of it, they did all think I had autism. I said I had it. <laughs> are you on the spectrum? Because you, you didn't get a single sentence. And then they it was quite interesting because they sent me when I was talking. They'd write it all up. They'd do a transcript of it, and they sent me that to to make sure it was all correct. And for the first time, maybe I could actually see how I <laughs> your spoke. thought patterns. <laughs> well, it's like some of the sentences were three words long. They were like word, 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 full stop. <laughs> That's called being pithy. All right. <laughs> Uh, uh, so no, no, that's no. good though. That's very good. Um, to be honest, you know, uh, most CEOs and uh, businessmen, like from what I've seen, all generally ADHD. Um, they need a lot to of them, at uh, least. wear a lot of hats and jump into a lot of things. Um, and you know, you, at, at your role as um, owner of a company is often just putting out fires. Um, you know, and you need to be able to jump into that and be energized from that. So ADHD works with that kind of compliment really, really well. It's um, as soon as there's an emergency, you're like, yep, let's go. Cool. Finally, something to do that I'm not bored with, you know? Yeah, you know, I mean, what's funny about that is that it's, it's true. It's kind of like a superpower, but you 
see that the people who are in those positions, uh, who have gone up the kind of societal ranks, uh, they tend to know how to treat their own condition, yep. whether that be through some kind of uh, medicine or, or just in Meditation, terms of how they actually you know. handle themselves. Um, because it's easy to, to if you're managing something with like a hundred different components to just let it all go off the fucking rails. Um, mm. You know. That's what I need. Yeah, I need to get in some form of meditation or something. I always go, no, I can't do it. Yeah, I'm, I'm Don't have the time. Do Meanwhile, you yeah. don't not have the time to meditate because when you do yeah. it, you know you're better. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah ca- cannabis is the one bit that helps. But yeah, I've, I've, um, but I've made sure I get the right team around me too that can turn that's, all that's my crazy ideas into the structure it well and then um, <coughs> you know present that to the people that need it. But uh, yeah, yeah, it's. No, yeah, cannabis I'm, I'm, is a secret cheat code to me for meditation. It puts you in that sort of same state where your awareness and calmness is kind of put on, and it's like, oh, these are just the thoughts that are running through my head. Cool. Okay. Now that right. would be yeah. an interesting, um, that would be an interesting bit of research, like looking at how it impacts brain waves and that mm. kind of thing. You know, because mm. there's so, obviously yeah. like uh, quantifiable differences in terms of how people are um, processing information. And mm. just their kind of brain processes when they're meditating. So yeah, 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 hundred percent. Yeah, I, uh, I, I definitely would like to see more uh, studies with ADHD and cannabis. You know, like they're slowly coming through, and it's seeming to be a pretty effective treatment. But it can also go the other way for some people. I've seen it. Um, you know, you could the be right the formula. No, and that's it. Um, for me. I always knew cannabis kind of worked, but there were some that just, I, I was too scared or, you know, obviously too sleepy. And that's where you start learning mm. about terpenes and strains and all of that. And then eventually you just find those strains that you're like, fuck, I connect with this. This, mm. this makes me feel human. Like I feel like a normal person where I'm able to focus how I should and um, talk to people without constantly interrupting them still struggle, but you know, um, <laughs> But it's, uh, and then when you find that alignment, it's good. And that's, what's been great about the medical program. It's like, oh, I finally found the one. And then you start using it and it's like, yep, improvement in results all over. But then you know what sucks? goes out of stock or the batch changes and it's not quite the same anymore. Mm, Um, And that, and that's the challenge, you know? Um, And that's why when I find something that works, it's like, okay, I'll get five tubs of that one. Thanks. Um, I'll be sorted for a few months. And then hopefully the next batch is still in line if it's not uh, but um uh you know i think that consistency is coming I, I think a lot of the companies have gotten better but you know sometimes it's like um uh, not to be too rude i'm not going to name name them out but uh you'd get a tub of something uh and then it's nice and green and pretty and then your next batch is purple and you're like ah well this is definitely a different phenotype isn't it um and it was maybe grown more in the cold and obviously different compounds have come in but they've labeled it the same bloody product and i just there's so many um there's so many components in terms of just like how it's uh kind of treated and when it's actually taken off the the um the branch and all of this kind of stuff how it's cured yeah Yeah, and the thing is the bits we're talking about now they're the companies that are um meaning to do it the right way and it's just the natural plant having variations but what really annoys me is the companies that are intentionally changing it well they yes. run out of one they import another 20 to 1 oil it's a completely different product but they chuck the same stick same on label because, yeah that's that's the because, biggest and issue. that's the whole um api thing i mentioned as long as the thc and cbd is the same level that's all that needs to be consistent unless it's over two percent mm-hmm. um so it's, it's legal and compliant but for people to understand cannabis and the, the formula is like whoa that's dangerous this three-month-old mm-hmm. baby's having seizures again like it's yeah. a high and, and selling out of medicine i hate it it's there's a fine balance yes the companies are trying to do mean well and provide medicine but i think i mean i spent years before i brought a product to market i made sure it was reliable consistent we could actually buy it again and again a lot of companies right. are doing their first grow this year in australia and i'm like I, I, it looks great but i need to see if you do it again and again for a couple of years at least. it's got to be reliable for the people that are using this stuff absolutely it's medicine you know again it's um but I don't want to come across as the way where it's all about, oh, this is a medicine. Because it is medicine, yes, but I understand the recreational side and self-medicating as well, but we're not there yet. The one, I, I keep thinking of the three-month-old baby. That's the one mm. I think of with all mm. my decisions. And so, right. and, I, and, and again, it's, I'm the opposite end of the scale. I'm, I'm the just calm down at night or a sore toe. So, um, but 
we're also treating three month old epileptic baby. So we got mm-hmm. to treat it very serious like that and every product has to be consistent. So it's hard when I learn about all those different things or products being a little bit misleading. It's 100 milligram per mil full spectrum oil, but it's actually right. 99% isolate and a teeny bit of full spectrum in there. Yeah. So yeah. it's not a true 100 milligram per mil full spec. It's, and so again, it's just a way of, um, there's nothing wrong with that if, as long as they're open about it and we can mm. educate on that. So a patient that, thought they were getting 100 milligram per mil full spectrum can judge it accordingly and not That's think it. that it's useless but it was really because it was mainly isolate and just these little things so it's but then i go well at least these companies are trying it all so it's um you gotta start somewhere yeah but then at the same place. time it's it's like, so much there's so much room for improvement um well, in yeah, terms well, of just the efficacy well Having the marketing would help with that weirdly that. Yeah, exactly. exactly. You know, because like then they could actually go, no, this is a hundred percent full spectrum oil. You know, they could talk about that. And the fact that yeah, they yeah. can't, it's I don't know. I understand not really wanting to market uh restricted medicine and uh, I can understand the reasonings behind it, but at the same time, that brings so much more efficacy to the market. So it's kind of I could see it's like a bit of a catch-22 for the TGA to kind of make those decisions. Um, mm. But I, I think they Some need to relax really good, that. I don't want a just, TV ad, you know. Yeah, yeah, that's what I was thinking. It's like um, in the US, they're very lax <laughs> about their regulations when Crazy. it comes to medicines. And it and it is really weird. But yeah. simultaneously, I think that people should be able to get their their name and their product out there to some capacity, even if it is in a limited capacity. Um, of course, you know, that's probably yet to happen and... Uh, you know, could happen at some point as the regulations mm. shift and, and change. It's just, it's so strange being at this point um, <laughs> where where so much has opened up in such a short period of time, but there's still so many ways in which mm. the scheme could be improved. You know? Yeah, yeah. And it, and it will be improved. And that's the thing everyone's got to remember too, is I always see a lot of people complaining about this and going, oh, this, yeah, it's useless, it costs too much, this, 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 but it's just the system, the interim fix, as I mentioned earlier. As soon yeah. as, it's just that, okay, to allow cannabis, let's do this system. We're in alpha but or beta, long... you know? We haven't reached real scale. Exactly. And the real scale version is the, the registered product side. Hopefully, mm. again, there's another in-between bit. I mean, it would be great if they did the nutraceutical with our industrial hemp side of things. True. Um, and then another one in-between, it might just be THC through prescription, others, uh, even for medicinal use, but maybe just all S3 or something, who knows? But... But it will change. It has to. It's all heading there um, because the system we've got has only been developed for the, a short-term fix. You know, it's not a. Right. It's not the forever. And so people that go, oh, this system sucks. Is, hope they don't think it's that's it forever. You know, yeah, that's um, it. Given that the good. TGA is has made all of this possible, it's actually kind of remarkable we've gotten this far. So mm. that's, that's exactly. If one. I went to them and, and crushed up a bit of this pen and mixed it with a bit of this paper and said, "This is a medicine for my sore knee," I'd say, "Great, Matt." <laughs> 10 years and 10 million bucks later, come back to us. And, yeah, and pretty much. Could have done to all of us. And so it's, it is, it's pretty unique that they've done this, but that's also opened the door for some of the uh, less, uh, less some of the cowboys that are out there that are just jumping on it and just want to sell some flour. And it's uh, yeah, just a money making thing and nothing else about actually helping patients or the industry or it's, you know, blah, blah, blah. But it's, um, yeah, it's makes it exciting each day. One thing I, um, remember was when I was at UIC, there was flyers for some fl- uh, flowers out and had one company talk to me and I was like, pretty interested by the flower. I was like, oh, really? Okay. And I grabbed and they're like, are you a doctor? And I'm like, no. And they're like, oh, you can't have that. And I'm like, what do you mean? mean? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I was like, oh yeah, that's right. The whole marketing thing. But I'm just like, I'm the patient. I also know what's good for me. Like, you know, the doctor's mm. not living my fucking life all the time. I understand the plant pretty well. I mean, that's I why um, that's why inf- informative like resources like Catalyst are so great, right? Yeah. They just allow people, patients, to to have like a basic understanding of what's out there, and I think yeah, that's so they needed. can talk to their doctor properly um, because the doctor might not know yet. You know, like well, that's uh, the situation we're in, isn't it? It's that little limbo period where not see so normally there's no rule of a medicine where Public is that many variants? It. Well, and that the public were using it for the last ever, and yeah. then and then it became illegal medicine. Normally, it's someone's invented it in a lab or something, yeah. and then it becomes medicine. So we don't know anything about it. The doctors have learned about it, and that's so that's why I guess they just need to be marketed too because we mm. don't understand bloody oxycontin or whatever. But this is the opposite. This is yeah, <laughs> it's, it's, it's a bit different. It hasn't happened like this before, where people have been using something's medicine mm. illegally or whatever, and then it becomes illegal medicine. Which that's obviously the driving side. All these other interesting areas where it overlaps. It's like, oh, hang on, it's it's not a um, illegal system now. There is a bit of it still. So can you drive it? Then you've got not all that side of things. Mm. But um, 
I just hope they change these things the, the right way. That's, That's why you got to tell the people that know what they're doing to get involved with those get conversations. Involved. Just email the people in Parliament or however you do it. And, um, Betterletters.com.au, send them a letter. Woo! <laughs> and drive change as well. Drive change. When we're talking That's about uh, the driving laws, yeah. The, um, yeah, exactly. The thing I was thinking about recently was you know, the US, how they did it with the dispensary model where you'd actually go in and see the flowers and it wasn't tubbed up and that sort of thing. I think um, that's something that should really be considered because that allows the patient to look at a quality of what it is. You know, I'm not necessarily saying we should have open scripts. Um, I know a few clinics and doctors got into that sort of trouble a couple months ago. But, um, you know, maybe with a bit of consultation with the doctor or the pharmacist or whoever's running those dispensaries, and you know them weighing it out there so then you know you're getting the correct amount of um message uh, uh product um and that allows for potentially like the compounding pharmacies to do it but something that um cannabis advocate uh jenny hallam said on our podcast that really struck a nerve with me um not in a negative way at all more just like i was like oh that makes sense is when you smell cannabis you know yeah, if yeah, you'll yeah. enjoy it or not like I was about to say earlier just, yeah yeah when you, you know, were talking about um, finding your right strain, I reckon when you yeah, smell it, you know, you're like, yeah, oh, you're like, that one. that's for and me. It also feels good. Yeah, yeah. You know, and Seems to be a consensus there. Yeah, I, I think anyone who has ever really had cannabis in their life knows that feeling of like, oh, yeah, yeah, that, that's going to help. Because I'll sit there and go, um, so example, we, actually, no, so I won't come into um, like brand names or anything. So our new product we got... Um, I arrived the other day and so I opened it up. I was like, all right, here we go. Smell test. Boom, boom. And then show some other people. What do you think of this? So my partner smells like cannabis. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. They don't have that nose. Do you get the yeah, yeah, but then I smell wine, it's like it smells like wine. And other yeah, people yeah. are like, no, I smell this at the other. So yeah, it is. Um, I guess you end up training your nose. And it'll be Subtle good because palate. I can smell. Yeah, I'll, I'll come in and I'll go into the um the lab where someone's bottling up some terpenes for the endoscent range and be like, Oh, is this? Uh, I smell a high note of eucalyptol. Are you doing our pain? <laughs> you know, and like things like that. Is and it's yeah. I like, it. but I do think when you actually so far, that well, put it this way: when I smell cannabis, I haven't really liked the smell of. Yeah, ninety-five percent of the time, I didn't like the effect either. Yeah. But on your point about being able to um, look and smell before you try, etc., one hundred percent for the over-the-counter side, it'll be harder for medicine. One, because we've got it radiated all, so it's not going to have much of a smell left anyway. Two. After a few days of people opening it and smelling it, you're going to have to keep getting new stuff. Blah, blah, you know, it, it, I don't think it, it should be pre-packaged in those containers. I think there should be more generic containers and then they say scoop it out. Similar to like a dealer, right? Like they've got a big bag. Yeah. Um, maybe it's a kilo too, however much it happens to be. And, you know, maybe they have a small amount on offering and it's in a glass jar, similar to the dispensaries. And then it's like, mm. here, have a look. Um, this has been known to improve this, 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 these effects. Um, it had it's worked for people with these conditions, but it hasn't they worked work so well S3 for this. Three scale, you know, and then that, yeah. and then the farm they they're just choosing the product then, and then the pharmacist prescribes it when you yeah. figure out which one. It'd be hard with um, yeah. Well, that's the dream there. If that's I mean, I view that as more of going to the dispensary. Um, well, yeah, right. People are I, calling the pharmacies dispensaries, dispensaries these days, but dispensaries that not always have to be a, a medical uh, thing, right? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Don't know. Anyway, uh, just the corner weed shop. Um, that'd be great. Yeah, I'd love that. Don't know if you go in there. Bang, bang, bang. You know, but it, it, I think it could still be done under the medicinal scheme. I think they need to just be a little more creative around it. And um, California has shown that it's possible when yeah. it comes to the dispensary model. The interesting one there is like, cause what I don't like is the system where the doc, the medicine system elsewhere, where they go, um, yep, you can go and buy weed and you just go and buy some weed. Right. And then you're really reliant on that bud tender or the dispensary. Uh, to know I know exactly what you're what saying doing because yep. you could have a product that makes your anxiety worse or your Parkinson's yep. worse. So and you still so think there's a need for like a script, basically? Yeah, or, or some kind of a. Um... They need to connect the bud tender to the doctor's records, so the doctor's aware of what you're still getting. So then they can you talk to you about it when you have your follow-ups. some sort of accountability. You know? there. And yeah, the bud yeah. tenders themselves, I don't think it should be like any willy nilly person. Potentially, it's a TAFE course or a uni course. You know that beca becomes another little industry, creates jobs, um, and I think you know what politician hasn't won on? Uh, I'm going to make jobs. Um, as a bit of a lobbying mm. thing, you know. On that one, again, if there's say if it's even the S3 and there's any other medications involved, even when we're talking about it being a medicine, the issue there is they would then have to have uh, pharmacists. Again, it's, all, it's all safe, but they'd have to then have a bit of knowledge on the other medicines they might be having to, and just think, well, make sure everyone that and that, and mm. it's then tricky. But um, but yeah, they, hopefully they just have another little 
another category of this where it's that uh, prescription side, but it doesn't fall under this S8 or whatever, S8, S4, et cetera. And it's just, it's a prescription nutrition or something, you know, in some way. But, um, and it, the hub is there. Again, we can't even categorize it going, okay, we understand these bracket of products are good for X, Y, and Z because it's not like that. Everyone has mm. a different effect. So it's really complex. Yeah, so it's too hard to get a bit of a system going, okay, they're allowed to be prescribed anything from category A, uh, and then that bud tender goes, all right, well, these are all the category A's, have a smell of these. Again, it's, that's just real mm-hmm. hit and miss as well. But if it was afford- a lot more affordable, you can just buy a little bit if it didn't work, go and get some more. But that's true. it's not like that at the minute. So it's, yeah, we've got to make sure it's as best it can be from the start. But it is tricky, isn't it? So it's, mm-hmm. um, I, I can't wait for the people that have all these really good, interesting ideas of new ways to work these systems. Um, it's like it's got to happen. But the yeah, people will innovate. Wait, yeah, or well, at least we just wait for the recreational, wait for the nutraceutical side. Um, that's what I love about the Hem Brothers side of things. We can actually market it and advertise it and I can hold the product, you know, and, and yeah, it's it's really hard on the medicinal side to spread awareness and education without being told off. Yeah, mm. That's it. True. I think um, this is a pretty good spot to wrap up. We've been going for a little while and I... Uh, it's been okay. a good chat. Thank you for your time. And it's been a great chat, to be honest. Um, always a pleasure doing these podcasts. And especially when we have, um, you know, people that are doing really, really good things in the country um, and, you know, changing lives and improving them, really. And yeah, thank you. All right, thank you, fellas. Cheers for your time as well. Thanks for having me on board. I'm sorry if I was a bit uh, scattered and all over the place today. Yeah. You even had to no, uh, good. potentially rescue someone from a car crash and uh, you just jumped out there without thinking about it. It was actually, it was a big, I heard it, it, yeah. it and then saw it, but there was already 10 people around the car. But yeah. uh, Oh, wow. Was, that did actually throw me a little bit. I was a little bit kind of um, scattered. It threw me off track of what I was thinking of. But uh, I think we covered half the stuff we're up to. So, uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, but no, All yeah, right, stay tuned for fellas. episode two. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, definitely. But I uh, appreciate the support. And uh, yeah, no, always, you got my full support as well, fellas. Yeah, Thank thanks, you. mate. And, uh, and to all of our audience members, make sure to check out uh, Medican Clinics, Endeavors, Hemp Brothers, yeah, Medican Clinics, and Hemp um, Brothers, Marley Endocent. Um, just follow Matt along on uh, Facebook or LinkedIn or uh, Instagram, like wherever you find him, he'll be around. Um, He's a good bloke doing cool things. So, yeah, I'll just be lurking around. Uh, cheers, guys. <laughs> Appreciate it. All right, thank you.